Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation about stormwater sewer and flood modeling. In the last 10 years, more than 1,000 people lost their lives due to storms and floods in Japan. More than 100 billion US dollars have been lost in the same period due to natural disasters in Japan. Therefore, there is a great need for accurate and timely information on probable impacts of natural hazards such as floods. On top of that, most of these existing solutions are managed by official institutions and are therefore not very suitable for the specific needs of private companies. The oil solution is the distribution of one of the most versatile Earth observation flood modeling softwares to companies in need, helping them to minimize the impacts of floods as well as supporting them in using the software. We will require an effort-based service charge for the specific projects and to achieve all this we will need an investment of 400,000 US dollars to cover all our main costs. The fundamental challenge of our project was to find the most attractive geographical market for our startup to launch the Earth Observation Service, enabling stormwater, sewer and flood modeling. To be able to solve this complex challenge, we used the Value Creation Wheel. The Value Creation Wheel is a meta framework that helps to solve all kinds of complex problems and manage innovations. Through this framework, we were able to identify Japan as a very suitable target country for us. In this presentation, we will show you how we developed the individual phases of the framework, starting with the problem definition and ending with the business model. This project was made possible by our international team. One of the requisites of the value creation wheel method is to involve the key decision makers in the process and incorporate stakeholders' inputs in a very dynamic way. Each team member acted as a key decision maker of PDB. Additionally, we interviewed external stakeholders from NGOs as well as from the construction, insurance and consultancy industry. A special thanks to everyone who gave us valuable inputs throughout the value creation wheel process. So what is PDB? PDB empowers water professionals around the world to create, manage and maintain water services. We want to help prevent flooding by providing stormwater, sewer and flood modeling for locations that have potential for improvement. Our ultimate goal is to make people's lives safer and protect the environment. Our values are integrity, collaboration, trust, innovation and responsibility. PDB acts as a distributor of one of the most versatile softwares for stormwater, sewer network and flood modeling forecasting solutions by the company Innovise. Innovise analyzes the risks of current water systems and discovers areas with needed improvements. Innovise uses earth observation data, hydraulic models and rainfall observation data in order to develop 1D and 2D flood simulations. The company provides several versions to meet the needs of any organization or project. For example, there are some versions that focus more on sewer networks while others focus more on river or coastal floods. So let's start with phase one of the value creation wheel. This phase is about discovering value. We will define the KPIs for our project and perform an industry analysis to get a clear understanding of our project. As mentioned earlier, our main challenge is to find the most attractive geographical market for our startup to launch the Earth Observation Service, enabling stormwater, sewer and flood modeling. The Earth Observation industry is an emerging market and can be divided into three stages upstream industry, downstream industry and the end users. The upstream industry includes the sales of satellites, while the downstream industry is about the earth observation data acquisition, processing and transformation into information products for end users. The service we distribute is located in the downstream industry. In this market, the majority of applications are governmental and new entrants are expected to trim their shares of dominant market players. Since 1980, over 2 million people and over 3 trillion US dollars have been lost to disasters caused by natural hazards. Climate change could lead 100 million people into extreme poverty by 2030. The problem is that not only the frequency of flood is increasing, but also the intensity of floods. As a result, the percentage of the global population at risk from flooding has risen by almost a quarter since 2000. As you can see, a service like the one we distribute is highly relevant as there is a great need for accurate, timely and usable information on probable impacts of weather, climate and hydrological hazards. This map illustrates the global flood risk. Countries highlighted in blue have little change or a decreasing proportion of population exposed to floods. Compared to the red and orange countries which have an increase in floods, this blue area is relatively small. 
find out where this blood modeling software of Innowise could have the biggest positive impact, we reached out to stakeholders from different industries. It appeared that the software could be relevant for the construction industry as their current water measurements are getting less accurate due to the increase in extreme weather events. The insurance broker Pedro Rego described the software as a new form of risk assessment that is really helpful to insurance companies. Looking specifically at Japan, the consultant Ivan Bacol has confirmed that Japan could benefit greatly from the software. The service we distribute has a close alignment with the SDGs. The most obvious one is SDG 13 to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. As the service we distribute prevents and minimizes the impacts of floods, this is a really good way to support SDG 13. But also SDGs 1, 3 and 15 can be contributed to. Poverty, illnesses, or also land degradation or biodiversity loss are all possible results of floods. So Innovise's service can have a big positive impact here. Besides the SDGs, PDB is also aligned with the European Green Deal and the Paris Agreement. PDB fosters new technologies to minimize the impact of climate change. It also protects biodiversity and ecosystems as we had before because those are possible results of floods. And the service we distribute provides action and support in different areas, especially looking at warning systems. PDB's potential target markets are local governments, utility companies, construction companies and insurance companies. The most important ones are the ones to the right as they can benefit the most of the versatile software as well as the consulting service we provide. To figure out the influential factors on our startup, we conducted a pestle analysis. The environmental and technological factors turned out to be the most important ones. Floods are seen as the most frequent type of natural disaster and the frequency and intensity of floods is increasing. This development leads to a higher demand of the service we distribute. Looking at technological influencing factors, there is a high level of innovation in the industry, forcing PDB to keep up to date with the latest technological improvements. Further, it takes time for organizations to implement technological changes in their systems. Therefore, supporting organizations in this process seems to be an important factor. To analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, we conducted a TAOS analysis. The big strength of PDB is its user-friendly sensibility. This enables an easier introduction of the software to organizations that have no experience with this kind of technologies. As we are a new player, we aim to create partnerships that help us to adapt quickly on this growing market. Besides that, we want to collaborate with governmental organizations to increase our bargaining power. To make up our lower level of technological knowledge, we need to have a collaboration with IT experts. Now we have the Porter Five Forces. And here we can start saying that the level of rivalry is medium low, and this is because of the low level of diversification of current companies with the same system, and also because of the high amounts of investments that are required to start gaining market share. Then on the thread of substitutes, it's also medium level, and this is because of the other 1D or 2D modeling and mapping services that might deliver the same job but a lower effectiveness, and also because of the final decision we require that the end user has to make some previous research in order to make sure that the best option available for their needs. If not, they will incur into more expenses. Then we have the threat of new entrants, which is medium level. And we can say here that the incumbents have already established a large network of clients and the previous years of experience may affect the attractiveness of the industry. But on the other hand, we can say that the potential companies with disruptive innovations have incentives and opportunities to enter and gain a substantial portion of the market share. Now, talking about the buyer power, it's also medium. And here we can mention that minimal costs for consumers to switch between providers may do this and the difficulty to obtain a premium services at a lower price. Then on the supplier power, we can say here it's medium high and this is because of the differentiation we can have on final imaginary and analytics provided. Just to quickly have a summary of the external and internal analysis, we can highlight on the pestle analysis the environmental factor on increasing frequency and intensity of floods, and the social factor because of the past 25 years more than 2 billion people worldwide were affected by floods. On the TOS analysis, we came with a maximax strategy 
where the user-friendly sensibility can facilitate the introduction of the system in organizations that did not have the, this technology before, and the mini-mini strategy that in collaboration with IT experts we can ensure the results of the data provided. And on the Porter 5 forces, we mentioned it, that the level of rivalry in the Earth observation space industry is medium. As part of the external analysis, we found these services that can act as complements to the Earth observation systems. For example, the lighting imaging sensor that was designed to detect and pinpoint lighting from thunderstorms, measuring the time of occurrence and its radiant energy. Another example is the China High Resolution Earth Observation, which is a combination of space-based satellite and ground systems and an application that will provide all-day weather global coverage with the best and highest spatial resolution reaching nanometer levels. Here we have a crucial part of research, which is the competitor analysis. And now we can talk about the direct competitors of the service we choose to provide. First, there is the Global Flood Awareness System that utilizes 3D terrain data covering and offering frameworks related to infrastructure, environment and population, assessing three different scenarios on the years 2020, 2050 and 2018. Next, we have Flood Futures, which is the tailored products can give an overview of the current and the future hydrometeorological situations for the coming floods. Another direct competitor is FloodMap, offering a combination of big data analytics and automated machine learning techniques that can achieve large-scale rapid flood modeling with hydrology and hydraulic models that will allow to read forecasts, rainfalls and river heights that can generate large inundations. And finally, the risk management IT system provided by Hexagon can give accelerated management actions during live floods that can minimize the impacts and can support planning and reconstruction measures. To create this competitor matrix, we base our comparison on five different aspects that the direct competitors may or may not offer. For example, giving flood risk alerts, the real-time control operation of movable structures, the urban and rural hydrology modeling, a maxima bottom that represents the worst case scenario for an individual model, and which kind of terrain data dimension is available to use. In summary, we can highlight that the service provided by Autodesk offers the four of them and has 1D and 2D imaginary services. It's also important not to leave behind the topic of the indirect competitors. And on this part, these are companies focusing on other integrated and sustainable solutions that help local authorities, governments, and infrastructure operators to understand how to rescue and reconstruct the damage caused by floods, taking activities pre-disaster, during the disaster, and after the disaster. For example, water management, hydraulic and coastal engineering, physical planning, and the provision of drainage. Now, it's time to mention who we wanted to involve in our project as stakeholders, and we can start with national governments, politicians, and local or regional regulators. Then we need comments on some private individuals living in high-risk areas and some environmental conservation agencies. Continuing, specialists on water resource management and other flood specialists will help as well to have a better insight on the matter and finally the insurance companies and its brokers as they can be clients for the service. For this we separate the KPIs in four, being the first one project process related. Here we are going to have compliance with weekly deliveries for the project and the involvement of the internal and external stakeholders. The second one is project output relatedness where we want to apply at least five global and three local filters to have a final decision on where to establish, and that our solution is consistent with at least four sustainable development goals. The third one is project team related, where all of us have to understand the value creation wheel method and exchange comments with the professor in case of uncertainty. And the last one is company outcome related. Just to mention some, we are planning to expand to five additional markets on the next 12 years and have continuous adaptation of our service to customer requirements. Now it's time to pass to the second phase. For the potential geographical markets, we are considering the 193 countries of the UN. In order to have our criteria and the filter selection, we choose to use the brain writing method that consisted on each one of the team members writing down in a piece of paper our ideas on what we thought would be the most related filters according to what we are trying to solve. 
then pass it to the next person where she or he can say if they like it or not and that can add a comment or refine the first idea generated. This process occurred for five rounds until each one of us would write every idea that came into our minds. So then we can make the final decisions on the filters we are going to use. By applying this method, we were able to find 51 potential filters or criteria. The potential criteria or filters were then split into eight categories. First, the political aspects, including the percentage of governmental aid spent in natural disasters. Second, the env environmental factors, including the number of river floods in the last 20 years. Third, social aspects, including the number of lost houses due to floods, and fourth, the technological ones, including the quality of Earth observation data. The fifth category of the potential criteria of filters is the economic one, including the GDP per capita, the frequency of reconstructions after disasters. The legal aspects are the sixth category and include the regulation on data policy, or the strength of patent laws for EO services. We decided to take the competition as our seventh uh, criteria. Um, this includes the competitor's average pricing, the competitor's market share, or the percentage of shared target customers with the competitors. Our last and final category here is the infrastructural one including the quality of local sewer systems. We are now assessing phase three of the value creation wheel. This phase focuses on validating the initial idea and brainstorming possible filters. To begin, the selected ideas get reviewed again. As mentioned before, all of the 193 UN member states will be considered as potential target countries. One of the key reasons for this is the fact that the United Nations me member states show a high commitment to the SDG goals, which are in line with the mission, vision and values of PTB. In this phase, we are focusing on selecting the final filters from the larger list of our brainstorming results. In order to evaluate the usefulness for further analysis, each filter generated in phase 2b of the value creation rule framework, the POCO method was used. Consequently, 33 filters were killed, 6 filters were reviewed, 1 filter was multiplied, and 11 filters were kept. Through this method, each filter was evaluated due to its capability to add value to the analysis. Finally, we were able to identify a total of 19 filters, including 11 global ones, like the expected population exposed to river flood risk or the exposure to coastal flooding. Five filters were identified as nice to have ones, including the water supply and sewerage infrastructure satisfaction rate. Three filters were used as local ones for further analysis including the exposure to river floods, the exposure to coastal flooding, as well as the amount of damage caused due to floods. We then were able to rank the final filters according to their importance. One example here is the annual expected population exposed to river floods, with the following explanation that river floods can be minimized through working with the software we distribute. Shown here are the nice-to-have filters and the local filters ranked according to their importance. Especially the local filters were important for the further analysis, including the exposure to river floods with the explanation that the regions most at risk will be able to minimize the impact of river floods using the software we distribute. We are now assessing phase four of the value creation wheel, which is to capture value. When we did our MCDA and value creation funnel calculations for the first time, we sorted the final filters according to their importance. In the value creation funnel, we realized, however, that we were excluding too many potential countries right at the beginning, since we only had a few data for some of the more important filters. As a result, 
We recorded the filters, applying the filters with less available data and the back of the calculations to exclude as few countries as possible in the beginning. Further, we decided to keep our theoretical ranking the same because we still saw the filter showing the proneness to the different types of floods as the most important ones. Thus, the order of our filters differs from the ranking. Through applying 10 global filters found with the MCDA method, we identified Japan as the most lucrative area to target. Within Japan, we implemented three local filters and found Hokkaido to be the most promising area. The value creation funnel was used to narrow down all the countries that are being considered in order to reach one final location that respects all the filters we believe to be important in our project. As pre previously mentioned, Japan is the only country who met all of our criteria. Here we can see the final ranking of the countries and the prefectures according to the 10 global filters and the three local filters. Because we reached four final prefectures with application of our local filters, we decided to do a strategic comparison analysis so that we compare all the four areas and see which one has the best potential to implement our service. We ended up choosing Hokkaido because it has a very vast area and also a very long coastline. Furthermore, we wanted to help an area that has more economic needs. So Hokkaido is the best option also due to its GDP per capita. To start phase 4b, we did a local competitors analysis where we compared the service of the four main competitors with Innovisa's software. Here we can see that we compared iCharm, Fujitsu, Takuba and JAXA. We decided to use a radar diagram to see what were the five most common characteristics of those systems and compare them. We concluded that many of the services offer a very broad service, but also that Innovise is probably the service that has the more complete offer. For example, it distinguishes itself from flexible plotting capabilities to build and manage hydraulic models and also rapid scenario management. Afterwards, we decided to segment our market, then do the targeting and finally positioning of our startup. We segmented our market into nonprofit organizations, private companies and governments. As our primary target, we have insurance companies, construction and utility companies, and also institutions focused on environmental concerns, as you can see on the left. As our secondary targets, we have institutions with regulatory power, research agencies, but also the Hokkaido Disaster Prevention and Crisis Management Division. Our positioning statement is the following. For all organizations aiming to prevent and manage flooding disasters, PTB provides access to one of the industry's most versatile software for stormwater, sewer network, and flood modeling, helping our clients to save lives and finances. Due to our local expertise and the customized consulting of our customers, PTB makes flood disaster prevention and management more structured and effective. Now, as for the concept, we already knew that we wanted to distribute Innovice's service, but we also wanted to add more value to that. So we have the following four services that we wish to offer our clients additionally. Firstly, we want to adapt the service to specific companies' needs. We want to help companies with no earth observation knowledge to have access to the exact information they need, and also without having to waste time and resources to learn how to use the software. Then, we want to connect disaster-related Earth observation services to potential customers. This was our basic service, so we want to create a bridge between those suppliers and the possi possible customers. Uh, as our third uh, service, we want to manage data transfer from old software to new software and also provide lessons for companies that wish to learn how to use this type of software. Finally, we can also provide local specialists to smooth out business translations, like um, knowing how to speak a certain language 
or giving business advice or for example also providing a lawyer. As for prices, we are very flexible on that matter because the price of each service will also depend very much on the project. So we decided to have this minimum prices that can go up to more extended amounts, of course, according to how much work we have and also what services the customer decides to use. We decided to represent our prototype as a process. So firstly, uh, we will look for customers or they will look for us. Then we will do uh, market research um, if the customers didn't find us first. Afterwards, we contact the potential clients and meet with them to understand how we can help them. Then we develop an action plan and the pricing for each client. And finally, the action plan will be presented in a meeting and they will either accept it or revise it or not accept it at all. Finally, the action plan is implemented and at the end of the project, we want the client to give us some feedback so that we can keep improving our service. We also want to have a website so that we can contact our customers and they can know more about us, but uh, we want the website to be very clear uh, and direct and also a website that incentivizes the customer to speak with us directly, to call us and to email us. Finally, we developed a marketing mix. And what we wish to highlight from here that wasn't said before is that promotion will be done probably directly uh, by interacting with the customers, but also by us being at national conferences and through our website and of course through search engine optimization and email marketing. As for physical evidences, we want to provide a customized customer treatment um, and we want of course that simple direct website. As for people, we will still need to hire more, but right now we would have nine fixed employers plus local specialists. The place, uh, where we will distribute this service will be at first uh, our website for a first contact, but of course we must directly contact the clients to understand what they really need and of course to provide a very customized service. So now let's have a closer look at the fifth phase, which is the last phase of our project. So, on this slide, we can have a global overview of the three M's. So, first of all, it starts with the manpower, we have, where we have divided the walls within our team. But we have also established a recruitment strategy to make the project plausible. Then, we set up the cost strategy, highlighting the revenue streams and our main cost. Then, regarding the minute part, we divided our strategy for clients, implementation and funding into five periods until 2024. This will be explained in more details in the following slides. Our project can only be viable with the support of a good team. To this end, the right people must be found according to their expertise. And this is why, in addition to having our core team, we need to recruit externally. So firstly, regarding the external recruitment, we will need several people at different positions. A salesperson with a background in IT in order to support the sales manager. Then, IT technician will be mainly responsible for the technical customer service. We also need a local specialist, according to the project, who will help us for several things, such as having an easier communication with the client. And finally, a collaborator from supplier will enable us to adapt the supplier service to the customer's needs. Then, our team will be composed as following. Firstly, Beatrice Rego as a CEO, then Frederick will be head of customer service and technology, Anna as head of marketing department, since she had several experience in marketing. Also, Israel will be the head of the sales department, as he had a bachelor's degree in marketing and communication. And finally, Arno Calbert as a CEO, CFO, since he seems to be the most appropriate person for this position, by having a background in finance. In order to launch our project, we estimate an investment need of 400,000 euros. 
The cost that we'll have at the beginning of activity will be high. Firstly, an important part of the budget will go to the salaries. We count them in gross. However, it will be necessary to deduct 50% of insurance and pension, 5% of income tax, and 8% of resident tax. 5% of our total budget will be invested in marketing in order to recruit external people, for instance. Then, in order to create a company itself, there will be costs to get our business name and in the registration fee. Our company also need to have an office in Hokkaido, where the office renting, as well as water and electricity, will cost $750. It is necessary to be well equipped in our office, where we have to buy some equipment such as computer or phones for instance. Finally, to launch our website, it will cost around 20,000 euros, and we also count other costs such as insurance and legal fees. In order to achieve our fund objective, PTB has to establish an investment strategy. Our first approach is to solicit the help of our friends, family and fools. Being outside investor with almost no investment experience. Then, crowdfunding will also be an important part of our strategy, where anyone who invests in our company will receive share within it. One of the keys will be the investment of business angels and venture capitalists. To achieve this, it is essential to attend different events, such as conferences or networking sessions. Launching our project in Japan is a unique opportunity for PTB company where there are various national institutions promoting the integration of new projects within the country itself, such as Mitsui & Co. Once a business is profitable, we will seek bank loans, where they will not have share in the business, only interest on the loan that will pay over the long term. The strategy plan of the PTB company is divided into five parts until 2024. The main priorities as of January 2022 will be to recruit external people, find the first clients of the company, and accomplish all the initial KPIs and find our first office. Once done, we'll look for first external investor, generate our first revenue, and expect to reach 20 new clients by the end of the Q2. From 2023, we hope to become profitable, which will allow us to invest in additional tools, such as drones. We'll also see continuous improvement by collecting feedback from our customers. Then, the second quadrimester will be focused on raising new funds through our business angel and VCs, which will allow us to develop sales and marketing, as well as start our search to find new places where we can implement in Japan. Finally, we'll establish our first association with other places in Japan in 2024. Once Japan is conquered, we'll be able to look for new international markets. The first step of the consolidated value was to design the business model Canva. This allowed us to understand how to answer to who our customers were, what value we could create, add for them, and how we could do that at a reasonable cost. Based on our value proposition from our service, we found a way to all our different channels, such as email listing, to reach our customer segment. Once reached, we should maintain a good relationship with them through our remote support, for instance. But to capture and deliver value, we need key resources, such as an office in Japan, where we will rely on our activities and partners to be successful. Regarding the revenue streams, this will mainly be, be based on client's payment and the investment, while our main costs will be spent into salaries, platform development, and marketing. The completion of the KPIs that we've been able to perform so far are globally satisfactory. In fact, we've been able to complete seven KPIs and two are still in partial completion, giving us a completion ratio of around 80%, which is quite very good. Indeed, all the individuals and collective assignments have always been delivered on time. The integration of the KDEMs has been achieved throughout the project. We only have a good command of the VCW today, where we will be able to give our feedback after each phase. We apply the filter number that we had set as a target, and we were able to flourish in our group work. We also shared our misunderstanding with the teachers, such as the troubles we met with the Excel file. Today, we need to look to the future and complete the biases, where we still lack the involvement of a stakeholder and the development of a concept that is aligned with four SDGs. Finally, what are our future goals? Regarding the short-term ones, our main priorities are to find clients, investors, and generate revenue by the end of 2022. On a long-term basis, we develop six main objectives, 
Our main goal is to expand in international markets within the 12 next years. That was our presentation. Thank you for your attention.